Well, why don't we go around the table, starting with uh, with Ben and uh, your name and, and who you represent and how you fit into a discussion about food. That's right. So I feel like very good. That's right. So I feel like very good. That's right. So I feel like very good. What we'll try to do for this final discussion is work with the concepts on the three sheets to the right. To yeah, to, to most of our right. Uh, and um, rank them in a similar fashion to what we did here uh, earlier in the afternoon. And using a, so yeah, transfer each one in, in turn back to the easel so we don't have to worry about bleeding markers. Uh, and, and so we'll go through more or less the same thing that we did before. With the, Wants to circle, uh, cross <laughs> off, or, or leave neutral? The first, the farmer's markets, the cost. I, mean, I think this is a consensus we have to address. Do you think are the most right? important things to focus on in terms of future work, or what are you trying to? I think that's, yeah, yeah. I think that, that's. Well, I think if we're going to work on farmer's markets, we have to work on everything. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, I think it's all one big bucket of issues. So the whole farmer's market is an issue in itself. I think education has more options. Okay, all right, well, let's put that one up and see. The bottom line question is where is the best place to put our energies? Right. I guess the answer that would, would be to know who in this room has energies to apply to the, <laughs> yeah. to the Well, it's either <laughs> our energies or someone else's energies. <laughs> I, 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 I think that in answer to that question, it's, it's you know, partners is the one who is taking this initiative and, and it's going to instruct us on where we're going from here. We had tried some things in the past, like our own efforts at farmers markets that were disappointing, so that's why we organized this meeting. So we, while we want to continue to engage <coughs> our partners who come to join us today, uh, it's partners as an organization that's going to take the lead with what happens from here. And, and I would add 1422 because there's more resources that have come into this community with that grant and will continue. I hope you all understand this is uh, uh, $440,000 for the next three years plus some money from the first year that we haven't spent yet. Right? So maybe our efforts should be on expanding what she's working, what Julie and Eric are working on. Which is, you know, working with the markers. Great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I, I just think I that, think you know, I think know. your brochure was, was brilliant. I think the whole idea of giving <laughs> people a map as to where they can go locally to get stuff is a really great first step in education. If you haven't seen it, definitely pass some this way, yeah. too. So we have a consensus that everything that comes in is going to get dumped on Julie and Eric. That's yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, can you pass them down this way? So, yeah. but do you want to work through education and outreach before we break? Do you want to and, and make some additional comments on it? Or just leave it as is? I, I, I certainly think it's something we need to explore more. Um, I don't think we've really done a whole effort on education. Maybe we need a similar meeting with some other people here to talk just about, about how to educate people in this community about healthier eating. Uh, you know, there's lots of little bits and pieces around, but, but no s kind of singular effort. And I think one of the things we were saying earlier is that if we can get a denser message out in more venues over time, we might actually begin to see some movement. What happens now is we get six or, uh, you know, I'm being realistic, six or seven people who come to a, a WIC grocery store tour. They're great tours. That's six or seven people, you know, and that gets once a month, you know, so you're not reaching lots of people. But if we found ways to partner with some of the major markets so they were conducting tours or other people were, or if we had, what was your idea about grandmothers, you know, coming yeah. in, you know, and... and you know, meet your grandma and stop and shop and find out how to cook good kale soup, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, that may be another way of, of engaging people in education in, the, in places they're already going. That's the other thing we, we have all the time. We'll do an education program and we get five people to show up. 
You know, we need to be where people already are. And so um, we also have pop-up tours. Um, I think it's, I believe it's through Cooking Matters. Right. Um, they do pop-up tours in our WIC waiting room. And it's there that um, families are taught um, mm -hmm how to shop on a budget and reading food labels and that. It's not in the grocery uh, store setting, it's right here in our waiting room. So maybe a, a pop-up tour um, in a different venue um, would work out well in another community. Uh, so I'm um, thinking of the summer when we <coughs> have the money from Star to be in a park every mm -hmm. single week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, what would happen if we had two or three summer programs where instead of having bouncy houses, we had stations that were cooking and, mm -hmm. You know, harvesting and pickling or whatever, and have a farmers market that so, day you know, or, or more like a, a more like an expo and do that once right. a month rather than and trying to do face a, painting for the kids. Yeah. You know, and have right. something yeah. that would make people come. To but, it. but instead of us just tabling with our brochures, right. actually all have some nutrition based and, and health based. I think that's a good idea. And so, I know we brought this up at the partners meeting, but. Last summer they did movie night. So instead of doing a movie night where right. you're sedentary, why don't you do something more active? Because the neighborhood associations can get involved. They can kick in, maybe even get CDA involved with community development. That's the you you work on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think that if that would bring see a agencies will come out if they're going to get something out of it. And when we did the safety day. Mm -hmm. We told everybody that they could not table unless they had an activity mm -hmm. for people. That, and every single mm -hmm. one of those 40 agencies that showed up had some safety-driven activity. So if we were to take the same model <coughs> and work with it on food prep or food right. storage. Or, and then have the farmers there to absolutely. talk about how the food got there. Okay, so it's educational. Not you, I mean, you can sell food there, but that's not the purpose of being there in that sense. It's more... Um, helping people get better connected to food, and you can talk about where they can go to get the food that you grow, but that's well, that'd be the, the perfect, event is, perfect right. place to have the five dollar bags of surplus. Yeah. yeah, that would be the perfect way to, to, to have it because we get two thousand people to come out in the park for a program. Mm -hmm. I mean, we get the people. And, that's and where we get the most people. Actually, we have some plans for, for the summer already, right? Right. Yeah, yeah we have the whip day, prep the plan, day. the field day. I mean, we get thousands of people. So that's our best way of connecting. Family fun nights, we get a lot of people, mm -hmm. but we already have a nutrition component. And because of the limitations, people can't actually yeah, cook. Yeah, they can only <laughs> serve. They can't and eat, they gotta right? Cook. They're going to cook a week from Thursday. They are going to cook? They, the nutrition education program is coming in, and they are cooking. Good. The families are cooking. No, like, there's a demonstration. Oh, okay. No, but I'm saying, right, yeah, it isn't like when we did the Johnson and Wales chefs with yeah. a, the people actually. Yeah. Yeah. But you're still talking about strong, small numbers. If you're talking about big numbers, you got to put school right near the top of the mm -hmm. list. That's 10,000 people, who kids who can serve as change agents, as they often have. So, and, and in the lots of different ways, whether it's family mm -hmm. fun, right, whether it's UMass Nutrition Education mm -hmm. Program that goes in, whether it's through health education, uh, now that we have an extraordinarily good contact with the new head of the Health and Physical Education Department who actually sits on the Partner Steering Committee, uh, yeah, that's got to be near the top of the list. Okay, so it doesn't look like we're going to rank anything. Uh, <laughs> what we seem to have is the framework for how we approach three different areas that are all part of a comprehensive effort to expand, enhance the food supply, particularly targeting our, our, our population of, of low and working income, low income and working income families. Is there anything else anyone wants to add to any of the three areas? Or any other thoughts, final thoughts, about what partners should do to move forward? Marsha. You know what I'd like to see change? And it's a result of one of the questions that you had sent out to us, Dave. Uh, and I don't know that it's anything that we should be able to do, but why not throw it out there anyway, as long as we're brainstorming. It really, really bothers me and has for a long time that when you go to a restaurant, there's a children's menu that is usually hot dogs, hamburgers, and chicken fingers. When a busy mom, dad, whoever the family adult is who does the cooking at home, does the cooking at home, when families sit down as a group, which they don't that often do, I don't believe anymore. 
mom or whoever the cook is, is not going to make a separate meal for the kids. So why are they doing that outside? I read a very interesting article in Standard Times probably a year or so ago when a woman who was writing a book on child rearing had spent some time in France and had picked up on that and had never really thought about it before when she was in this country, that when you go to a restaurant, there are smaller portions, but it's of the same thing that the adults are eating. Now, I understand that you can't have a smaller prime rib unless you get a little cow, I guess, I don't know. But, um, but why they don't have just smaller portions of the same <laughs> things, because that's what you do when you serve your family at home. You know, your children might get a small portion of what you're cooking, but you're not going to make chicken fingers for your children while you're making whatever Actually, else for your family. Some people do. Lots of families do. <laughs> well, that's just wrong. <laughs> 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 and I, uh, I mean, I mean, you, I, you, I, you never went to a place where there was a children's table. I grew up. The children sat at the bridge table, you know, and the adults the sat thing. at the dining room. They go to Thanksgiving yeah. dinner and they, they eat the same, the same thing. But I become very conscious of that and very conscious of looking at that menu to see what it is they offer, and it's junk stuff. So it's, and I don't know that we could have any control over that or be able to change that, because that's a that's a big policy or procedural change. But that's that really bothers me that they do that. I think that's bad. That's wrong. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My two cents worth. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Andrew. Uh, so who's going to fund all this? Yeah. <laughs> we don't worry about that. Well, I'm, I'm just. We, well, well I'm actually, the, the, they, they have money. They have money. They have a lot. Yeah, it's all federal and state. Uh, no, they it, have money for this particular stuff. As long as it fits within DPH's yeah, within the framework. Yeah. Yeah. And, and partners has a little bit. And we have some money too, then I'm trying to figure out what we, we also, yeah, what we also have is, is human capital yeah. that we can yeah. apply mm -hmm. to, to this. Yeah. 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 We have five people that work for partners. We do more without yeah. money than anybody else that I've ever met. In all the different places that I've But it is a very valid question. of leveraging support um, in ways that other communities don't have. It's, it's not so much how much money we're going to spend on something, it's are we doing the right thing? Exactly. And I, I'm, I'm more, I mean we can do a lot of things and we already do a lot of things. That's not the issue. The issue is how effective is that? Is it really the best way to, to accomplish the overall goal which is remember to get people to eat whole unprocessed food. <laughs> okay, that's well, the simplest way I could put it. I also think that we make an assumption that uh, most of our colleagues are in agreement, but when Marsha and I did that training, Food for Thought, I was completely and totally blown away when one of the um, staff people from a very large uh, organization here in town said, oh, well, you know, our people don't eat that way. You know, they're not going to eat hummus at a meeting, yes. you know. They, they want their donuts. We'll eat the hummus, but our, our, our clients those, aren't going to eat that. Those people right. don't It was eat such that. a division the way our colleagues thought about it. So maybe that's a place to start too. Maybe we have to start educating our colleagues that there shouldn't be a division in the way you eat and the way your clients eat. Well, you also get the, they're never going to eat that. And yet when we did the, was it the piece by piece when we no, served the kids? Was, it was the uh, parent cafe with the carrots. No, there was another one earlier on where you served, where you served yeah. all healthy things and, they, and you said, they said the teenagers are not going to eat that. If they're hungry, they'll eat whatever's out there. The kids not only ate whatever it was that we had served, but they loved that. So, I have a question which is um, thinking about that in terms of application. To me, one of the ways to get things done is, you know, really this whole idea of focus on outcomes, which a lot of grant funders are all jazzed about anyways. Um, and obviously resources, you know, you don't have, but if you were thinking, I have lots of ideas that tend to dwell in the not so realistic world. Yeah, what is utopian world? Like and, uh, <laughs> like if I was in charge of some little magical world, I would figure out resources on a significant level that would allow like three teams to work on this issue for three years and have a competition which team can move the, the bar the furthest. You know, and like, I'm thinking like Robert Wood Johnson kind of thing, like say like, hey, like, let's say these, because ultimately if what you're really wanting is the outcome, like allow the creative ingenuity, to me it seems like one of the keys is to have this collaboration and the only way that happens is if you have that person who's constantly pollinating, going back and forth and making marriages happen. Um, but I would think that you need to maybe allow for some creativity or something how like a market driven like results based kind of thing and pitch that to a funders group and say, hey, is this exciting? They have E for all. Entrepreneurship Hall, it's a new organization in town. Yeah. It's like Shark Tank, you get yeah, your yeah. idea, and then they help you. But I mean, I think if you look at this from a <laughs> social application, 
I guess I'm thinking that, you know, we do what we can here and there because we're excited to contribute to the community, but the grand scheme of things, I focus on how to grow food the best way I can. And there's tons of incentive to do that really, really, really well. And one way to, to approach this is really to figure out how to get a few more people that drive their livelihood by having results. Not very helpful. But. Oh, that's interesting. Well, you know, the, the question is, what determines the results? And unfortunately, I mean, we live in a capitalist system that result usually ends with a dollar sign at the end. And, you know, you know you're successful when you've managed to acquire capital. You know, uh, on, I think to some degree, the issue we have is that getting people eating better doesn't necessarily result in anybody making more capital. If you want to make capital, sell sugar. Okay, that's worked for, for a century very well. Uh, but the capital that comes from eating good food is always marginal. That's just the reality. We offered 110 high-risk diabetics to be in the voucher program. Of the 110, 92 participated. Of the 92, 47 participated, 50% or more into the market. So we have that, do the math, we had a significant number of people who were offered $10 a week for, you know, vegetables. And you can get two boxes of strawberries, and the farmer was willing if some of the, the uh, produce was a little damaged to put a little markdown table. But you still have people not taking advantage of it. So that's the thing why I'm here and why I want to say, okay, what we're doing, and we also have, we have a, um, 1,200 employees, not all at site, but about 800 or so, that have disposable income. We also have a Marie Poussapon Outreach Ministry. So our mission this year is Mercy. So one of the um, sisters is really key into helping um, employees, because we have a lot of employees. We have, a, you know, we have physicians to housekeepers, and we have a lot of employees who don't make a really a much of a wage, or you know, so. She's actually very keyed into, and last year she brought um, $500 worth of uh, farm buck cards just to hand out to employees, you know, so they could use it um, anonymously. And so we have, that's what we have going on, and what we're trying to do is say, okay, you know, of 110, why 47, why not 110, and what can we do better in our own employees? Many want to participate in the CSA. We didn't have as good a uh, turnout as we could have, should have. And we want to encourage that because we also want our employees to eat more healthy. So that's what, that's what I'm looking to do and why I'm here. Other than being part of, you know, partners and wanting the whole, you know, our focus in our community health plan for St. Anne's is the low-income um, popu and vulnerable population. You know, it's, it's interesting that other than the DPH, the, the Burfus uh, <coughs> telephone survey of how many vegetables you eat and things of that sort, and those figures are now 2009 or something like that. Uh, we don't have good measures of any change in people moving toward healthier food. We know nationally that fewer people are buy purchasing soda, uh, but we can only guess what that means here. Stuff that fewer people are, are purchasing beef. That there's stuff nationally, there. yeah. More people are shopping in small markets that don't have, uh, you know. Uh, commercially based food and things. I mean, there is, uh, yeah. there is. You've seen it leveling off the new cases of diabetes. Well, yeah, that's, again, national figures. I yeah. wish we had an easy, easier way for us to know when we try some of these things, right. you know, w what's actually yeah. changing, well, we'll you know. Well, of the, like, like I said, of so the 47. No lines. Yeah. And we're not gonna see impact, especially if we're looking to target the schools and looking at kids as change agents, it will take years before we will right. see any benefit. I mean, maybe we'll just have to build in some kind of uh, uh, survey, simple process objective to whatever we try so that we'll get some feedback as, as to whether whatever is being offered is being taken right. I'd be interested with Whitson's to find out. I know that they offer salad bar very often and I'd be interested to find out what's being thrown away and what they were not eating. You know, they had a great, beautiful mound of vegetables on their plate, and almost every single kid threw it away. So it's not enough that we're just putting it on their plate. We have to somehow ascertain if they're really eating it. 
and it will take us generations before, you know, they said when, we, when Whitson's first switched over, it was the high school kids that complained the most. And the elementary school kids, the first graders and the second graders, they didn't know to complain. That was the meal you gave them, and that's what they eat. And now that we're three or four years down the pipe, middle school kids are much more comfortable eating that. You know, so it takes a while before we're going to see any result. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say to you, of the 47 people that came over 50% of the time, we did see a reduction, 59% reduction in the A1C level. We did see a weight reduction. It isn't, you can't necessarily tie it all back to, but it's the one thing we, we had that's changed in their life of that 22-week program. Mm -hmm. So, and that's the kind of information, like even talking with Jeff Cole, that's the National Farmers, he would like to work with me even more to get, like, really hone it down. So that, that's the kind of, you tell people that they can change their A1C level um, and, and really make a difference by eating more fruits and vegetables, that's, the, that's what we'll talk to physicians and that's what speaks to, you know, when you get to the level when you're diagnosed with pre-diabetes, um, that's what speaks to you. How can I, what can I do if I want to go on insulin? We are very close to the end of our time. Uh, are there other final thoughts, comments, advice to us in moving forward? <coughs> okay, well then, then why don't we, oh, oh Ben, I'm sorry. I, I do feel like the, the three sections, I feel like there's an opportunity for a new type of distribution and, and connecting, you know, it, it's, it's somebody with a truck and a phone, good people skills, who can connect, you know, this group with this group, with this farm, with, you know, this grocery store, and I, I don't know what the model is, but I, uh, I, I feel like it's a sort of a missing component. Mm -hmm. um, Makes me that, that's often, you know, you were giving all the examples of why <coughs> people don't necessarily shop at a farmer's market, and then there's, I can give you all the examples of why I don't sell in New Fall River. Right. <laughs> so, I can give you those examples. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, 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 the distribution is on the, the yeah. farmer's markets list. We'll, we'll but I, I we'll give that extra in, in attention. terms of it, it's yeah. it's a new it's a new category. It's I hear you. Yeah. 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 Well, it, just it, like to to drill in on that for a second though, like with the mobile market, it wouldn't have been successful if you're having two farmers go to one location okay. with a relatively narrow product and it's a new thing. Like mm -hmm. you know, to me, it's that that school bus renovated with basically your your produce section or your grocery Absolutely. store and on a very set rhythm and set schedule going to those communities and not working a nine to five hour, but like, you know, having hours to the senior citizens at certain times yeah. of the day and then certainly past working hours. And I think, you know, those people then also when they can buying local as it's appropriate. And, and we have the additional, you know, the idea of just having a truck would up so much. There've been so many times where we have been offered large quantity. We got two tons of bananas a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And just to be able to distribute it to everybody that yeah, could so benefit get a truck. by it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and refrigeration. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Dave is, is running the, the food pantry, uh, yeah. but he doesn't have refrigeration. So today when they brought him, they had 20 pallets of broccoli wrap, he only could take five because that's what he could get rid of. And the rest got composted. That, that's a crime, mm -hmm. that we have hungry people and we're composting mm -hmm. good food. Mm -hmm. Karen. Um, there is, it made me think of Spoiler Alert, which is um, a woman, Cindy Newfield, who is trying to make the connections between farms and available food and the people who need them. You know, so she's got, I don't know if it's an app or a web page where, she, you know, she's trying to help make the connections between getting the food where it is is available to where it's needed. Who is it's called Spoiler Alert. I can send around the link. She was at NOFA, and she's been to um, CMAP's annual meeting, and is looking to make connections. You know, that kind of, dis I don't know if she's actually doing the distribution or not, but she might have an idea to, you know, to kind of pull that aspect into it. Anything else? Dave, you have a final word? No, uh, I would, while we're talking about uh, conferences and things of that sort, uh, the Ag School um, next month. Do yeah, that's yeah. it. So um, part of what CMAP does is education for sustainable farming and local food, and our signature event of the year is the Ag and Food Conference, and that's February 28th at the uh, Bristol, Agricult <coughs> Bristol County Agricultural High School in Dighton. 
Um, and Kendra's got probably, can rattle off the workshops. But we do about two dozen workshops, about 250 people come, and it's everything from worker safety to um, how to grow pumpkins. So. Can you send us that link also? I can actually send, send around the link. Yeah. Right. Can I use the email address? Sure. That? Oh, yeah. Sure. All right. Then, yeah, I'd be happy to send it. It's a great event so on Saturday. It's actually Sunday. Sunday. Oh, Sunday, Sunday February yeah, I'm sorry. 28th, yeah. and the uh, snow date this year for the following weekend. Good. If you want some PR, if you send it today, we can put it up on the microphone. We'd love that. Thank yeah. you, Pleasure. Yeah. You could also blog about it if you want to attach a blog. And we'll put that in the yeah. but, it, but I think yeah. that that's another piece in terms of getting people more interested in what goes on in farming and work better connections and things of that sort. That's all part of that education process uh, so that we know that french fries don't come from a box. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are doing a kids track this year. Great. Yeah. 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 Really? In the okay. freezer aisle. All right, so <laughs> thank you all. Particular thanks to our, our collaborating partners, uh, the, the farmers, uh, uh, James and Mia, Derek and Ben, and, and Kendra and Karen from uh, CMAP. And, and they had to leave, but, but we enjoyed Rachel and, and Lydia from UMass participation. So but thanks to all of you. Appreciate it. We, we, we that we will, will devote the resources that we have modest but still significant uh, to going forward in, the, in what we discussed and stay in touch with all of you, uh, attend your conference, uh, and, and uh, <coughs> the, the collaboration at a level that works for everybody. Uh, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike.